Hi there everybody, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to AP Chemistry. In this video, we're continuing with Unit 5, which is over chemical kinetics, and specifically, we're talking about sections 7, 8, 9, and 10. Those four topics talk about multi-step processes and reaction mechanisms. If you're new to my channel, uh, take a look at my playlists and my complete AP Chemistry course right here online, and I hope you subscribe if you haven't already done so. Now, as we take a look at multi-step processes, it's interesting that a lot of reactions, maybe even most reactions, take place not just in one step, but two, three, four, even more steps than that. Let's take a look at one example of such a reaction mechanism here. We have a two-step process where we have dinitrogen monoxide gas is decomposing into nitrogen gas and then this O oxygen atom and then another dinitrogen monoxide uh, molecule is reacting with an oxygen atom to create nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. And so our first question here is write the equation for the overall reaction for this process. Well, pretty simple. All we have to do here is add those two steps together. And you might notice that just like you would in algebra if you were adding two equations together, that we have some substances here that we might need to cancel out before we can do this. There's the oxygen atom that's produced in the first step that's used up in the second step that we can cancel out. So we're gonna cancel that and now we can add up these two steps. We have two molecules of dinitrogen monoxide that we can write down, and the products are two molecules of nitrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen, O2 gas. And so here we have the overall balanced equation for this process. Now, the second question here is identify the reaction intermediate. Now, the reaction intermediate is the substance that's produced in that early step that's used up in the later step. And so in this case, that's the substance that we canceled out, that oxygen atom. So that O is the reaction intermediate. Remember, an intermediate is just something that's produced early on that's used up in a later step. Now, we can take this one step further. If we have a little bit of extra information, if we know which of these two steps is the slower of those two steps, we can also determine the rate law for the overall reaction. So we're gonna put some more information in here and we're gonna say that the first step is the slow step and the second step is the fast step. Now, it's important to realize that the slow step is going to determine the rate of the overall reaction. It's like if you have two cars on a two lane road Maybe you've been in this situation where you're riding in a car following someone who's driving very slow down a two-lane road. And even though you might be wanting to travel faster, the fact is you're limited in your ability to travel by the fact that there's someone slower in front of you. And so it's the same way here. The slow step determines the rate of the overall process. And so you might remember that in an earlier uh, lesson or topic of this uh, unit, we said that every step in a multi-step process has its own little rate law. So for example, the rate law for step one is rate equals K of step one times N2O. Well, guess what? Since that's the slow step, that's the rate law for the whole process. It's just rate equals K times N2O. So the rate of the slow step determines the rate of the overall balanced equation. Now let's try another mechanism here. We're going to take a look at this mechanism and once again we're going to write the overall balanced equation for the reaction. And you might notice just like we did last time that we have a substance that we can cancel out on both sides of the arrow, can't we? This NOCl2, it's the reaction intermediate. It's produced in the first step and then it's used up in the second step. So that's going to be canceled out. We're not going to include the reaction intermediate in the overall balanced equation, but now we can add everything together. We have two molecules of nitrogen monoxide plus Cl2 yields two NOCl gas. And so that's our overall balanced equation. Now, part B says determine the rate law of this reaction. 
Well, you might notice that in this case, we have, once again, two steps. The first step is a reversible process. It's a fast step. It's an equilibrium step. We'll talk more about equilibrium coming up here in a few units. But either way, the slow step is the one that determines the rate. So rate equals K times NOCl2 times NO. So we can write that as the rate law. Now, as you look at that rate law, you might find that there's a little problem with that, isn't there? Because we have a substance written in that rate law that does not appear in the overall balanced equation. This NOCl2 is a reaction intermediate, and it can't appear in the overall rate law since it's a reaction intermediate. So we have to do something to that. So what we're going to have to do is determine the rate for the creation or the production of that reaction intermediate and substitute it into the equation. So we notice that NOCl2 was produced in the first step. So what's the rate for the production of that? Well, its rate equals uh, K of step 1 times NO times Cl2. So I'm going to substitute in the NO and Cl2 in place of the NOCl2, just like that. Now this is something that we call a pre-equilibrium approximation. Sometimes it's called a steady state approximation. Either way, this is kind of a shortcut here to help us uh, see what the overall rate law is of this process. Of course, we can simplify this down. We have NO times NO, which is NO squared. So I'm going to write my overall rate law as rate equals K times NO squared times Cl2. So that's how you would uh, solve a rate law in the event that the slow step is the second step. And we have to substitute in for that reaction intermediate. Now, speaking of multi-step processes, if we take a look at a reaction energy profile for a multi-step process, we've seen these for one-step processes, but we haven't seen these for two-step processes before. So the fact that we have two humps, basically, on this reaction energy profile tells me that we have two steps that are taking place here. And the fact is, since this first step has a higher activation energy than the second step, that tells me that the first step is the slow step, and the second step is the fast step. Now, since we have two steps, we're going to have two transition states as well. There's going to be a transition state, or an activated complex, as it's sometimes called, right up here for that first step, and then one for this second step right around there. And we're going to have a reaction intermediate most likely being produced. And if you wanted to isolate that reaction intermediate, it would be right around here in this uh, valley of that two-step process. Now, once that reaction intermediate is formed, I would say it's very likely that it's going to continue and create the products here at the end of that reaction. And the reason I say that is that the activation energy of the second step is lower than the activation energy of the reverse of the first step. And so once it's at this point of the reaction intermediate, it'll be fairly easy for uh, it to go over that second step there, that second hump, and create the products. And so here we have a multi-step energy profile. Be fairly comfortable with how this works and how to interpret where the transition state is located and where the reaction intermediate is located as well. Also, uh, be aware of how to uh, interpret the fact that this first step is the slow step and that second step is the fast step because the hump on the first one is higher than it is on the second one. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something from it. Once again, if you're looking for a full comprehensive review of the entire AP course as you're getting closer to that AP chemistry exam, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet over at ultimatereviewpacket.com where I've got all kinds of study guides and, and practice and even a full length AP practice exams, which I think you'll find very useful, hundreds of practice problems that you can use that are similar in format to the AP exam. Uh, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.